Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about sections, a great addition into Figma to help you organize your file and also do some neat tricks in prototyping. Let's get into it. So what is a section? Sections are used to organize your workspace and your frames in your Figma file. You can find it under the region tools. So I can go to drop down. We see frame by default, but we have underneath it section with the shortcut Shift S. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a section. And before we look into the visuals of the section, we want to deep dive into the difference between frames and sections. So I have a screenshot of the properties panel of both the frame and the section, and everything in green is what is removed. So essentially, because the section is an organization tool rather than a design tool, they have removed some of the features, including clip content, order layout, layout grids, and effects, so drop shadows. You can see you can still control the visualization of a section with the layers feature, the fill, the stroke, and you can export a section. So now looking at this section here, because the frame and the section are kind of similar elements, you can actually select this section. And then in this drop down over here, we can actually change it to a frame. And I'm going to go ahead and change it back to a section. And let me just zoom out for a bit. Let me delete that. So I am going to draw a frame first. So I'm going to hit F to draw a frame and a section Shift S. So some key differences, you can see by default, the section has the same gray background as the artboard background. So I can go ahead and of course I can change this so I can make it this color. Another handy tool is when you zoom out, the section title is normally prioritized. So as an example, if we were to have a really big section, you can see how the frame names have slowly disappeared but we can always see the section name, which is really handy. Similar to frame, if you wrap any elements in a section, they automatically go in that section. So we can see here, section six, and we have the elements inside the section six. We can also double click. What that does is it creates a 100 padding around all the elements. So that's a really handy way to just wrap your elements and keep your sections clean. What else can you do? Let me just go ungroup. So I can ungroup to get rid of that section as well. You can nest sections within sections. So I'm going to go hit Shift S and then I'm going to hit Shift S again. And you can see I have sections nested within sections, but you can't have a section nested within a frame or an order layout or a component. So what does that mean? So since that's nested, I can go to section six. You can see everything has been turned off because I'm not allowed to nest a section with a frame. Let me zoom out. Similarly, if I have a frame here and then I try to draw a section within that frame, what actually happens is you can see it's not nested. They're just separate layers. And if I try to drag it under frame, nothing happens. And if I go right click, I can't create it into a component. So the section is always the top level in your layers panel. So what is the point of sections? There are a few use cases where you would want to use sections. The first one is just to organize frames in your workspace. And the second one is to define states in your prototype, which I'll show a bit later. So what does this mean? I can go ahead and create sections. So Shift S again. Shift S and I can wrap these frames and maybe I want to, for example, indicate to my developer, yep, these are ready for development. So I can say final. So when the developer jumps in my file, they can see which frames are ready to go. And I can go ahead and of course add additional sections to wrap other frames. Another handy thing you can do is you can select a section and when you hit share, you can actually link to that current selection. So you're actually linking them to that section. So anyone with that link will go directly to these group of frames. 
the second use case for sections is in prototyping. So with sections, we can create states in our prototype to tell Figma how to navigate back to where the user left off. So let me demonstrate with these wireframes and then I will show you in the prototype. So this is really handy when we have a tab system. So in this instance, we have a mobile design with these five tabs in the footer. And as you can see, each tab actually has multiple wireframes associated with that tab. So how do we know which screen we want to take the user to when they select this button? By default, we'd either have to connect each screen with each other, or we would have to nominate a default screen. So in this instance, in this search tab here, the default screen would be blank. But this is not always the best experience. Let's say a user has searched for something. Sometimes it's better to just bring them back to where they were. So in this instance, it would be the search results. So the way that we do that is by utilizing sections. So what I've done here is I've grouped these wireframes with these sections, which I've indicated by the name search tab and a home tab. So what does this mean? So now that when I select this footer, and I'm creating this prototype interaction with this search button here, instead of directing it to one specific screen, I can direct it to the section. So what that does instead is I'm telling Figma, when I select this button, I want you to take me to the last screen I was on in this section. But if I've never been on a screen, you can take me to the first screen, which on, in this instance is the default screen. So now let me show you the result of this in the prototype. So now that we're in the prototype screen, we can see we are on the default screen of the home page. And if I was to hit search, I'm now on the default screen of search. And obviously I can go back to home and I'm stuck on these two screens. So let's say the user has gone for search and they've gone ahead and searched for something. So they have their search results. If I now go back to home, and go back to search, instead of going back to that default state, it just remembers what was the last screen I was on, so which is the search results. And I can click it again to bring it back to the default screen. Similarly with home, I can select on this item to bring up the description. I can go back to search. And now when I go back to home, instead of going back to that default screen, it's remembered where I had left off but I can also click it again because of the way I configured it to bring me back to the default screen. So this is another way to elevate your prototyping with less interactions, but a more intuitive experience for your users. The last handy thing I wanna show with sections is this widget table of contents for sections. This is a huge game changer and it allows you to quickly navigate your pages in your Figma file. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for this widget. So let's go find more widgets. Table of contents for sections by Hiroki Tani. I hope that's how you pronounce it. So I can just go add. It's inserting this table. And now you can see it's built out this contents page. So, you know, you can go ahead and share this. So what you can do is you can link people to the contents page that you've created in this widget and they can quickly find your element. So I can go to final. So this is the final and you can see I can re return back to the contents that kind of overlay disappears after a while. So just going to remember that, but I can, you know, I can bring the table of contents to the top. So I just use the right square bracket to bring to front and I can see all my sections. I can see how my sections are nested, but it can take me to whatever section I have placed in this Figma page. So that's the only downside of this widget is if I have multiple sections in multiple pages, it can't read them. But for this page, it is pretty good for what it can do. I can change the size. I can change the order. And when I've add more sections, I can just refresh it to update the contents. Hopefully you've learned something about sections and feel confident implementing sections within your own files. That's all for now. 
I will create another video demonstrating how I set up sections for prototype. But as always, stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.